Josh Gordon is back this week, but I like Cordero Patterson more. No, it's not 2013. It's week 13 of 2017. And this is the Football Guys DFS show, The Power Grid. John, I'm going to kick it to you first to talk about Vegas. We always look at those lines at the beginning of the show to see what the general landscape of the NFL is for week 13. Tell us what Vegas is telling you this week. It's a really interesting week this week. I'm, uh, I'm excited for this show. I think, uh, I think there's a lot of different ways you can go this week. Uh, we're looking uh, at, at a number of teams. I, I'm counting uh, four or five above the, the, the total of 26, which is generally my cutoff for uh, teams that are intriguing in terms of um, just going after them because of chalk. Of course, you know, every week it's New England at the top of the list. Uh, their implied team total this week, almost 29 points, not quite as high as last week against Buffalo. That game's actually really intriguing. We'll talk more about it in just a bit, but uh, I think that's a really fast-paced game, and it's not just the, uh, the New England Patriots that are interesting there. Um, of course, the, uh, the Chargers are at home. They're in a must-win situation, almost two touchdown favorites against Devin's uh, Cleveland Browns. Browns won last year in this matchup. Just that um, thing. I, I, uh, I have a futures bet on the Chargers that hopes that doesn't happen this year. But, um, you know, I, I do think that this is an interesting matchup as well for a number of reasons. And, um, you know, the, the, the Rams, uh, they are away favorites. They're uh, the road favorites, touchdown favorites over Arizona. Uh, Todd Gurley looks like he might be the chalk this week in terms of running backs. But road favorites, we've talked about this in the past. Could be a uh, very tricky situation to, uh, to monitor. So outside of that, I'll hand it off to some of the other guys. But uh, some really interesting situations this week in Daily Fantasy. Ryan, you were flashing Black Eyed Joe's red and green here. You've got some takes on some of these maybe away favorites. What, do you, what are you thinking here? Yeah, you know, I think – and I'm going to kind of take a page from, from Jeff's playbook here where, you know, we, he talks all the time for GPP strategy about picking a game or two – thinking how it's going to go and react accordingly in your lineups. I think the NFC West might get a little closer this week. Um, I see LA coming off of a big emotional home win against new Orleans. then they go quickly on the road to a, a division rival. I think Arizona could upend them in a letdown spot. And I was really shocked Philly being as good as they are to see that they're favored by six at Seattle. Uh, you know, they give up a lot of yards via the pass and we know that Seattle doesn't even bother running because they're not very good at it. So the matchup actually kind of works for them, even though they can't run the ball. And I think that, that they can sneak up on Philly, who, who I know that they've been very good, but, uh, you know, to me it just seems like a spot they could let down to. And this is kind of a funky week. I mean, we've got uh, some road favorites that maybe we should be wary of. Uh, we've also got a lot of matchups where you kind of have to choose between taking a good player in a bad matchup and taking a bad player in a great matchup. So it makes you feel a little bit icky with some of the lineups you end up coming up with. Let's talk about quarterbacks. Jeff, I'm going to pitch it to you first, but let me mention some of the guys that are going to be different at the quarterback position because quarterback's a little bit trickier to pick this week, I feel like, than most weeks. We've got uh, Jameis Winston coming back, cleared to start against Green Bay. we got Jimmy Garoppolo starting uh, for the Niners against Chicago. Geno Smith is going to be starting instead of Eli Manning. <laughs> i got red, black, eyed Joes and upside down greens. All kinds of chaos to talk about there. Uh, Jay Cutler cleared concussion protocol. He's going to start versus Denver. And then Paxton Lynch is out with an ankle injury, bringing back Trevor Simeon at Miami, although Simeon is dealing with a flu bug. Uh, Jeff, uh, feel free to talk about any of those guys or what you like at quarterback this week. It's tough to love quarterback this week. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of options out there. And uh, the theme we're going to hear all week is that I don't feel comfortable with this pick, but, and that's where I feel a lot like with the quarterbacks. Um, <laughs> I'm going to probably stay towards the top end of the pricing a lot. Uh, Brady, Rivers, Wilson, those are probably going to be the guys I'm looking at for the most part. You, uh, the one guy I'm really watching is Cam Newton. If he's healthy and the Saints are not, that's probably the, a guy I'm going to have a lot of interest in because that game I think could be very interesting. Some, t some people overlooked that game because they played earlier this year and the Saints blew them out. But I think it could be completely different this week. Uh, I really like Cam Newton this week. It, I think it could be less around. And I'm also interested to see what Oakland's going to do in their passing game with the Giants banged up. I think that's a nice GPP look. 
Yeah, we're keeping an eye on those New Orleans corners going up against Cam Newton. If I had to guess, I'd say that uh, Lattimore is not going to play this week since he didn't practice on Thursday and that Ken Crawley could be back this week. He did get in a limited practice on Thursday. Devin, you flashed the red-black eye, Joe. It sounded like maybe you like a quarterback and feel a little bit more confident in a one this week. What do you got? Yeah, on DraftKings, it starts and ends with Jameis Winston for me this week. This Packers secondary is absolutely – atrocious um kevin king is the second round pick rookie um he played well earlier in the season but he has been he's been awful this past week we saw what ben roethlisberger did last week uh winston is coming back from injury so there's always that risk but he's priced down so low on DraftKings at just 5600 that i mean for me it's it's really not even a debate in cash games that i'm just paying down for winston um, he has 300 yard upside. Ryan Fitzpatrick hadn't been bad. I mean, he had 270 and 280 yards over his last two games. But I think that Winston gives this offense a spark that um, it desperately needs. Uh, Ryan and I flashed the red black eyed Joes on Winston. John gave it kind of like a green and a red. I want to go to, to Ryan first here. Why the red on Winston? I just want to see him come back first and, and see that he's okay. But even more importantly than that, they lost two really good offensive linemen uh, yeah. this week. So including a center, which is always a hard adjustment. We've seen teams historically really struggle with that. Um, I like Josh McCown for a hundred dollars cheaper. If we're really going to that same price range, uh, he's got Kansas city who has just been torched by quarterbacks. He's in a home game. I, I like the matchup. I like the spot. If, if we're going that price range, I even like Blake Bortles better too. Uh, against Indy he's also at home against a really bad team his ceiling might be limited because they're going to run a lot I'm sure we'll talk about that later but those are two guys I like even within 100 200 bucks better than Winston I'll bring yeah. up Mike Evans later and further develop this argument but yeah Can't for wait. me for me I mean they're playing they're playing for absolutely nothing right so you don't bring Winston back unless he's healthy that's that's basically my motto on this is that why else bring him back if, unless he is 100 percent healthy I, um, yeah, that, that makes sense. I, I, the lineman thing worries me more, though. Yeah, I like McCown more as well. But John, I think, uh, likes Winston a little bit. Tell me, John, what do you like about Winston? I, I, I'm not going to argue that I like Winston as a cash game play this week. And, and I'll also preface everything I'm about to say by saying I don't love any quarterback this week. Uh, <laughs> I, think my, I think my favorite might be Phillip Rivers, but uh, he's kind of pricey. Uh, outside of him, I, I'm not excited about any of them. Jameis Winston, though, is interesting to me from a GPP perspective because Green Bay, they have some horrid, horrid uh, defensive backs. Uh, their defensive backfield is one of the worst in the NFL. We saw what uh, uh, Roethlisberger woke up and, and, and threw, uh, what, 350, 450 yards last week. Um, and, and, you know, the, the, the thing here that scares me about uh, Jameis Winston, if anything scares me about him, is whether or not uh, – Hundley on the other side can keep pace with uh, with this this defense or offense, however you want to look at it. If you think that that Hundley can continue to do what he did last week against Pittsburgh, then Jameis Winston is a great play this week. I think I think he's going to be just fine. I'm not too worried about these offensive linemen because uh, you know we got into this a little bit, and you guys, uh, if you want to talk more about it, we certainly can. But uh, Jameis Winston is best when he's throwing shorter passes. And uh, this week, he is going to be forced to throw those shorter passes uh, because he's not going to have the type of time that he normally has to be inaccurate to Deshaun Jackson. The one thing we can say is that you want to stay away from Deshaun Jackson this week. I think he has zero value. And uh, that might be a consensus. Can we all get a green, black-eyed Joe on that? I'm with that. I think the offensive lineman missing, it probably hurts the deep throw the most, yeah. and that's Djax's game. And the tight ends, perhaps, as well. I think I, I think Braid is still in play on DraftKings at 2,900, but O.J. Howard likely will be blocking a lot. We'll talk about that in a bit, I, I suspect. But um, I, I, I'm, I'm with uh, Devin on this one. I'm sure Devin and I will disagree more than we agree as uh, is, is nor the norm on this show. But uh, in this case, uh, Devin, I got your back, brother. The only thing stopping Jameis Winston is the security guard at Publix when he steals crab legs. <laughs> <laughs> he's actually going to be there that's that's the irony he's playing cornerback so as long as he has to go to Publix start him <laughs> nice. I don't think I don't think they have Publix in uh in Green Bay so <laughs> Phew. No, it's P Piggly Wiggly so as long as he doesn't go to a grocery store <laughs> 
<laughs> nice. Or the pick and save. One of the two. <laughs> I always called it the hoggly woggly. That's, there you that's go. classic grocery store South stuff, man. Um, <laughs> all right. They have it in Wisconsin. Grocery really? store humor. Yeah, exactly. That's why the people watch the power grid. Let's go back uh, to Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's, uh, let's go to, uh, how about some running backs? Let's move on to those guys. Can we talk about Geno Smith? No. Do we have to? <laughs> I mean, he, he's minimum price. He I, is. I don't care. But. <laughs> Oakland, Oakland is the second worst pass rush. They have one interception that Navarro Bowman was laying on his back, and the ball just fell into him. This matchup, I mean, if Geno, Geno Smith is thrown for 350 yards in his career, I mean, he's thrown – Like in his whole career? career? No. He's, he's throwing to. In a, game, in a game, he's thrown for over 350 yards. <laughs> Sterling Shepard's back. Evan Ingram, this – it's the best, one of the best receiving cores that Geno's ever had. So this I mean, may be a power grid first, but Ryan held up the green black guy Joe when Devin was talking. So I want to hear what his <laughs> argument is here. It's just matchup centric. I mean, if we, if, if I think all or most of us agreed Paxton Lynch was at least feasible last week. It, How'd that work out? He got, he got hurt. He, got hurt. he, I mean, hurt. That's he sucked fair. before he got hurt. Yeah, but but he, he, was, was, he was on he his was way to 60 up. rushing yards. Like, he would have ran I mean, for the guy, a touchdown. Like, but, but he was on his way to 1X. He was, he was 5,400, <laughs> so he needed 16 points. Or I mean, Geno's 4,500, right? Or yeah. Something. yeah. I mean, he, right? So, th- we don't need much. Oh, you can, like, I mean, you could almost roll out of bed and triple 45X against Oakland. So, that, I mean, I, I, green, I greened the matchup more so than the player. But I mean, if you need the money, they're not going to go to back to Eli. Eli's going to go tell them, "No, I'm not going in the game." Where Where are you playing this guy? Are you playing in GPPs or cash games? GPPs. And what's his upside? His upside is 15, 16 points. I play Tom Savage first. No way! Absolutely not. Mm-hmm. I would. Gino can run for thirty or forty yards. He's Tom Savage. Is, Tom Savage is minimum, and he's no. got better receivers and against a better a, a better matchup. I, mean, I don't what, think it's what a do you want to put up? on it that Gino outscores him? I because I'll do that. Somebody <laughs> should shave their head. It's it shaving time. <laughs> Gladly. Like you're not you're clearly not that confident. I'm <laughs> I'm not bad. We're betting on the two worst quarterbacks of the slate. Are you kidding me? It's Let's a get lot. a kicker bet in later, too. <laughs> All right, let's move on. So, I, the we'll tweet out the terms there. of this bet later. Yeah, 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 exactly. All right, running backs. Uh, we got a few guys we're watching here. Doug Martin is doubtful this week in my mind. Uh, he didn't practice Thursday. Uh, I don't think Damian Williams is going to play for Miami. He didn't practice on Thursday. Uh, Amir Abdullah missed practice on Thursday as well. Uh, I'd say he's kind of questionable. Keep an eye on that one. And then Aaron Jones may come back for Green Bay this week, which could put a damper on people who are interested in Jamal Williams' volume that he's been getting. Uh, and then Devonta Freeman got cleared through the, per- the concussion protocol. He'll be back. So Tevin Coleman, the Tevin Coleman train ends here. Uh, guys, let's talk running backs. Um, you know what, Devin, uh, let's go back to you for running backs. I think the biggest question is what to do with Marshawn Lynch. Um, so he had 26 carries last week against the Giants run defense that really hasn't been that great this year. Um, they've been – They've been okay uh, at the defensive tackle position, but their linebackers have been so bad. And Jonathan Casillas, and um, it, it, it is a good spot for Gordon or for for Lynch. But the question is, how many carries is he going to get? So he's a guy that I'm interested in. The other the other situation that I'm interested in is Duke Johnson um, for a GPP play. So Duke is going up against the worst run defense, and Ryan's probably going to say, but they're getting better, and they're not um, in the Chargers. <laughs> Um, they're still giving up 133 yards a game, which is dead last in the league. And Hayes Pollard and Denzel Perryman are absolutely atrocious at linebacker. Um, this is a defense that's designed to stop the pass. And, you know, if, if they're going to stop the pass and put a focus on Josh Gordon and Corey Coleman, the dump downs, the dump downs that Duke Johnson are going to be there. So Lynch, I, I kind of want to get everyone else his opinion on because I can't figure it out but um Duke Johnson's a good GPP player this week. yeah uh let's do Black Eyed Joe's on Marshawn Lynch uh who's playing Marshawn Lynch in cash games uh would you go with Marshawn Lynch in cash games show me green if you are we'll ask about GPPs next all right we got greens from me Jeff and John a red from Ryan how about GPPs I, I think 
I think most people can get on board with Lynch and GPPs. I don't know if that's sure. really a question. Okay, everyone's got the green on that. Um, yeah, I mean, there's a few other guys in that same price range that we should talk about and who we like. Don't more. say Kareem Hunt. I'm done with him. I'm done with Kareem Hunt as well. But I'm Thank saying in, in that price range, I mean, you're looking at guys like maybe Alex Collins. Uh, you know, uh, Carlos Hyde isn't a ton more money. Um, Kenyon Drake. Kenyon Drake is another guy kind of in that range. If for some reason, uh, you know, Green Bay's Aaron Jones doesn't play, then Jamal Williams is another guy in that same kind of category that we're talking about. Um, Jeff, maybe tell me which of that bunch of guys you like most and then give me a couple other running back picks. I don't like a lot of them. I'll say I like some more than others. Uh, yeah. I would go with Kenyon Drake, I guess, out of that group, but I'm not exactly jumping up and down on either one. Yeah. Um, Alex Collins scares me because there's you've got competition for touches and Baltimore's a disaster. So uh, I would be more interested if um, if, if Abdul is sidelined. Uh, I'm, I'm actually disappointed mm-hmm. to hear um, that the Green Bay running back situation is in flux. I was looking more at using Williams this week because he looked good last week. Uh, yeah. I, th- and I think that's a good matchup. But I'm looking for one expensive and one cheap running back to try and get some value. Otherwise, I'm going to have to, have to go cheaper at wide receiver and go up for two studs. And the only two I really like are Gurley and Fournette. Those are the two guys I like at the top end because just the, the narrative is good for, for – uh, and the game script are good for both. Um, but after that, it gets Why iffy. not Kamara? Kamara, I can't. I don't think he's going to sustain his his yards per touch. I just don't see that 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 the script. Um, I, I know he's been doing well, but I just think that it's going to catch up to him, and I think it's going to be more of an Ingram game against Carolina. That's just my opinion. Yeah, I would agree that he's sort of performing way too efficiently for me to feel confident that that level of production will. Keep I mean, up. in GPPs, it's he has more upside than Ingram. Oh sure, oh, yeah. GPPs, yeah, yeah, uh, you know. But if I'm going to go GPPs, I'd probably uh, try and gamble on one of the New England guys as well. Yeah, which which New England guy would you prefer in a GPP, Dion Lewis or Rex Burkhead? Considering that, that that Belichick hates fancy players, and it proved to be true last week, and I was saying it like, watch it be, watch it be a Rex Rex Burkhead week for two touchdowns, and it happened. So now <laughs> Dion Lewis will get two. Yeah, I like Dion Lewis better this week uh, as well. Uh, but either one is a a viable play here. Uh, John, uh, let's hear from you on some running backs. Uh, I think you guys hit a lot of the ones I had. It, you know, this, I, as I said I, at the top of the show, it's it's really a tough week. There's a lot of uh, questions with regards to situations and uh, injuries, and it just it's not something that I love. Uh, if Jamal Williams is the sole running back in Green Bay, I think he becomes my best play of the week uh, in both cash games and probably uh, GPPs because of the volume versus his uh, his salary. So he's the guy I like the most. Um, and, and that's just something that the listeners and uh, the viewers are going to have to to monitor after the show is is obviously recorded and released. Um, one name that has not been uh, discussed, and I think I'm not going to talk about this person, but instead hand it off to my buddy Ryan, because I know his article features this person, but he is a person who I was looking at and will likely appear in Tips and Picks this week, and that's Jarek McKinnon. I like him a lot this week for uh, for GPPs, and I think he might be cash game viable on DK. But I'm going to let Ryan tell you why because it's in his it's featured in his article. Thanks, John. So I I, I looked at uh, Minnesota versus Atlanta, just trying to figure out who was going to do what. So you know, every week I pick a handful, maybe six teams, and it, just teams that I I know are going to score, but I don't know how. And so I looked at Minnesota this week as one of those, and. Uh, Early in the year, you, you got anybody that watched week two or three might remember the, the Ty Montgomery picture because Atlanta gives up so many points to receiving running backs. I wish we had made a bet on that one, Devin. But anyways, <laughs> that, that still stands. They, 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 they allow 13 receiving fantasy points a game to running backs, which is fourth most in the league, and six and a half receptions to running backs, which is the most in the league. And we know that that's what McKinnon does. Uh, so I, I actually like it more if true Desmond Trufant can play, even though that does look, I think, doubtful at this point. But but if he's there to help on the outside, it makes McKinnon almost even more viable. But I kind of like him as a GPP and either way. Yeah, I think those are all good points. And I agree that Trufant I'm is not looking like it. That the, I'm stunned that my number one running back this week hasn't been mentioned. 
Is Absolutely it Leonard? Stunning. Is it Leonard Fournette? <laughs> Nobody's on. Nobody is on Jordan Howard. Ah, that's my guy against San Francisco. Yep. Like nobody. I, I have him. I, mean, I have him. Everyone's going to be off of him because he had. Everyone's going to be off of him because he had seven carries for six yards last week against Philadelphia. He's right. going against one of the worst rush defenses in football in the 49ers. It's a perfect spot. Like. He's going to get 15 to 20 carries because the Bears aren't going to fall behind to Jimmy Garoppolo and the, the 49ers. Yeah. I, I don't I don't know like he should be one of he should be a perfect GPP play this week. I yeah. I'm looking at him in cash. I'm Me too. I would agree with that too. I'm considering pairing him with Gurley. I'm considering where I need salary relief, maybe playing him instead of Gurley if I really want to get a big receiver in there for some reason. It's I a- give you guys the softballs and you don't take them. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting to scoop that one up. I'm going to keep them for myself next time. No, no, no. I was waiting to scoop that one up. Uh, it, it, well, it, can I? it hadn't come to me yet. And I, my, he yeah. was on my cash list, and so were, were Melvin Gordon and, and yeah. Leonard Fournette uh, because of their matchups against inferior teams. But, but the one guy that I wanted to talk about for a GPP, and I talked about him last week, and it, it whiffed a little bit, but um, I'm going to go back out on Christian McCaffrey. Um, part of the argument against him last week was Greg Olson was coming back. Well, I don't know that Greg Olson is coming back this week. And, and even if Greg Olson does, uh, it's, it's a good matchup. Carolina targets the running backs at the fourth highest rate of any offense in the NFL. And running backs are targeted against New Orleans at the third highest rate of any, of any team in the NFL. This is so, draftings only, right? Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah point fine with that. Fine with that. Fanduel's too many, too touchdown it's dependent. Two touchdowns this year. Like, it's, it, yeah, it's it's very touchdown dependent on Fanduel. This is a volume play, but there's a chance that the guy catches eight passes this week. I mean, sure. I, I wouldn't think that's crazy, and, and maybe he does get in the end zone too, in which case he would be a good Fanduel play. But you know, I don't want to necessarily predict that. So Jeff doesn't like it. What's up, Jeff? Normally, I like McCaffrey, but he just costs too much. He costs seventy two hundred on DraftKings. I think he's the number seven or eight. The most expensive running back. I looked at him. He, I did like his matchup. He had a great performance, over 100 yards receiving the first time they matched up. But I just don't know if he can hit that number that he needs to to be there's a viable. Game, there's a game script that could turn into him being viable, right? Yep. Well, I, I think it if could they be. Fall, if any, they fall behind, right? I mean, I think he could be help. He could help them get a lead too. Je- Jeff, he is he is priced at running back seven or eight. David Dodds has him projected as running back five on DraftKings for scoring. So it, it may not be 3X, but he's still projected as the fifth running back. So I could see it happening either way. And, and because he's expensive, that's really why he's a GPP play for me. If Lattimore it, plays, it helps McCaffrey. Similar to McKinnon earlier. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. Uh, McCaffrey's snap counts have remained pretty solid, but his usage feels like it's kind of going down a little bit. Maybe that's a little bit. I wouldn't do it in cash. Oh, definitely not a cash play. Agreed. Definitely not a cash play. Keep in mind the first time they played as well, there, there was no Greg Olson and he was the number one or number two receiver. I mean, Olson's not going to play, is he? I understand. That's what I was getting Probably to. Probably not. Olson does okay. play this week, guys. Um, you think he does? I think he will play this week. Like not practice and play? If he plays, McCaffrey's a scratch. I don't think he's going to play. I I don't think he's going to practice, but I think he'll play. We'll see what happens. I'm off McCaffrey entirely. I agree agree with that. Okay. All right. But but Uh, yeah, keep in mind, McCaffrey's numbers were based on no Olsen. That's what I was trying to say. 100 yards, several receptions the first time. Agreed. Agreed. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. GPP play if Olsen doesn't play. And much more valuable in DraftKings. Right. Good assessment. Okay, only let's... Avail- only on draft. <laughs> and only if if they're selling varsity hot dogs outside the stadium <laughs> right before the game. Okay, uh, wide receivers. We've got several guys here. We're looking at uh, Oakland's going to be without their top two receivers. It looks like uh, Kelvin Benjamin. I don't think is going to be playing for Buffalo this week. He didn't practice Thursday. Robert Woods didn't practice Thursday. Alan Hearns didn't practice Thursday. Richard Matthews didn't practice Thursday with that hamstring injury. Uh, looks like Sterling Shepard's going to be back. And, hey, Josh Gordon returns this week from suspension after, like, three years. <laughs> and already Ryan's got the red, black eye Joe, while Devin. 1,078 days. That is I'm a long in. stretch. That is a long stretch. So, Devin, obviously you're not you're, – you're, you, you, <clears throat> what's that? <laughs> Can I start? Because yeah. I need to mention you're, you're, you're obviously not playing Can Gordon. You're not playing Gordon in cash, right? But you're, you like him in GPPs. Uh, oh. <laughs> oh. 
I mean, at 4,100, I'm, I'm not doing it on FanDuel. Like, FanDuel is right. dumb, but 4,100, they're going to – I mean, the spread's 14 points, right? 14 points. They're going to be down the entire game. Here, here's what I'll tell you guys. Go listen to Hugh Jackson's press conference. He's telling – he's already said he's the best player on the team, which isn't saying much. He's already saying, are we going to play him a lot? Heck, yes, we're going to play him a lot. And he's the most excited he's been all, all year. $4,100. Jeff, it, Jeff held it, up the green one. It, John, it, aren't, you the, aren't you the guy who says to Hugh Jackson every week in our base camp conversations, you're, you're bad-mouthing Hugh Jackson about how he says things that are completely untrue. No, I say he's the most honest coach in football because he rips on players and he basically just says, yes, Miles Garrett has been terrible this year. That's what he but said in two weeks Doesn't he ago. say that Duke Johnson's going to play a lot more and he never does? And, and didn't he once upon a time and since he – Try to give clarity on those backs, and it never works the way we want um, it to or should. Say at I mean, one hundred dollars. If Bill <laughs> Belichick <laughs> talked Casey more, Hayward. he'd be more honest about players than Hugh Jackson. Is Casey Hayward playing? Casey Hayward's going to play this weekend. Are I, you sure about that? I, I'm more sure about that than I am the Greg Olson take from from a minute ago. Uh, Casey Hayward's coming coming back, and for those of you who don't know, his brother died in a car accident on Monday, and uh, he's he's studying the playbook. He's uh, he's He's coming back to uh, to LA, be, I think by Friday, and um, I, you know this is a team that needs him to get into the playoffs. I'm not sure they they need him to beat uh, to beat the Cleveland Browns, but he's going to play. But on the perimeter, they've got two of the best uh, quarterbacks in the league, and Trevor Williams and Casey Hayward. And you got a guy who, as you pointed out, was it 1,078 days? He ran a and four three five forty. I, I don't clock care what he two ran. Two weeks ago, he's six four two twenty. That's Calvin Johnson. Like, it's the skill alone. Let's talk about $4,100. D.D. Westbrook, Mike Wallace, Marquise Goodwin, Bruce Ellington, Josh Gordon, Kenny Galladay, Don Trellinman. One of those names is not like the other. <laughs> I, I will, I'm actually kind of impressed that you were able to rattle those names off, so I'll give you credit for that. But can I'm, we, I'm turning we, red because I'm fired up. Let's do this. <laughs> let's, do this. let's agree – that we're not going to root for Josh Gordon this weekend because the matchup stinks. It's his first weekend back. I hope he stinks. And then next weekend against the Packers, we go all in. And everybody everybody puts up the green, black-eyed Joe next week. Let's do it then. I'm yeah. doing it both. Uh, I'm all in. I'll, I'll take – John, <laughs> I'll, take, I'll take it a step further, John. And even if he goes, you know, nine for 182 and two touchdowns and cost me 7700 next week, I'll play him then. Yeah. I'd rather play him then. Yeah. I'd rather – I need to see it. I have to see it. Wow. That's why I can't do it in cash. I've got to see it. In it's cash, it's almost the worst it. matchup he could have had in the NFL to come back in this yeah. week. He has five with, inches with, and 30 pounds on Casey Hayward. <laughs> All right. This isn't the Josh Gordon segment. We're obviously Fine. not agree Let's here. It'll be interesting <laughs> to see how this plays out. Jeff, brings rein us back in with some other receivers that are not related to Josh Gordon. Uh, well, I think Josh well, – I'm on. Board. I'm somewhere in between those guys. I think for the price, you can't do better than that at that price range than Josh Gordon. It'd be hard to beat for the upside. But um, and it's a DraftKings play only. Um, okay. Wide receivers this week. I think Keenan Allen's a great matchup. He's expensive though. Um, Cooper Cup looks good. Uh, Devontae Adams looks good. And then it starts to get a little sketchy. Um, uh, uh, for value, looking for value this week. Uh, on DraftKings, I'm actually looking at some of the uh, – trying to figure out who the best guy is to use in Oakland because they're so cheap. Um, and I'm actually considering an Oakland mini stack with a tight end and seeing that I can build that with a GPP. If I can get the whole passing game there, I was looking to see how much uh, – I think it's a 50% chance if you grab two wide receivers in the tight end for Oakland that they can hit value. So that's an interesting way to look at it. I don't know if I'd do it just yet, but I'm considering it. Um, yeah. So wide Cooper, receivers – Is Cooper out for sure? Yeah. Uh, he questionable. It's not I official. Don't, I don't think he's officially been ruled he out yet. Towards, okay. He didn't practice on Thursday. I do know so that. You'd have to be cleared tomorrow to play. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so if he doesn't practice tomorrow, he's not playing. Exactly, yeah. So he's, he's trending downward, but it's not officially over yet. Okay. Uh, Jeff, you, you, what were you saying there? No, I think I'll, I'll pass it on to the other guys to throw out some more names. But, again, you 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 got to find the value this week because it's a little tough to just – Locked in and say, yeah, this is absolutely a guy you can trust. I think mm. Cooper Cup's probably the closest one I can go with. There's one Rock at 4,100 that we can trust. <laughs> 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 I 
<laughs> Ryan, Ryan, who can, who can you trust, Ryan? Not Josh Gordon. <laughs> well, why can't we trust DeAndre Hopkins against Tennessee? Yes. They, 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 oh, yeah. they stink. Uh, I guess, Jeff, maybe you were talking mid to low price guys yeah, when you said you can't Eagles. trust, right? Okay, all right. That, that's the that's value. Fair. Okay, yeah. fair enough. My, my bad. I, I guess so. Top of my cash game play is, uh, is DeAndre Hopkins. Yeah. <laughs> we, can, we can maybe edit that out, Austin. Just kidding. Um, <laughs> nope. but no, but it is, it is a super weird, uh, weird week for wide receivers because even these guys that we think are reliable, we have questionable QB situations. I mean, we've got DeAndre Hopkins, Tom Savage. We've got Mike Evans, who I like, with Jameis Winston coming back, although you, know, you guys aren't questioning that. Uh, we've got Devontae Adams with Brent Hundley. And even Marquise Lee, we still have Blake Bortles, who, who I like this week, but he is still Blake Bortles. So those are the four guys I wrote on my cash list and, and I'm, you know, even semi nervous to play them. But, but to me, those are the four guys that, that I'm kind of starting with and seeing how the rest of the roster goes. Evans is a must play on FanDuel at 7,500. Uh, John, I think you have a take on Evans. Uh, would you agree with that? I would agree on that. I think, uh, you know, we talked uh, earlier with quarterback matchups, uh, you know, Devin and I were aligned with regards to uh, Jameis Winston uh, Mike Evans at 7,500, frankly, it's just too cheap. It really doesn't even matter about the matchup. But if you had the matchup in and look, just go over to our site, go over to our site, go to my football guys, and then uh, and, and check out the, uh, the game logs of wide receivers against the Green Bay Packers um, over the past two months. And you're going to be astounded by the, by the, the quality of, of wide receivers and what they've done against the secondary. And uh, I, I think this is a great spot for them this week, uh, a great spot for, uh, for Mike Evans this week. So I'm completely on board with, with Devin on that front. Um, with Can I mention those stats real quick since I have them handy? Yeah, go ahead, brother. Julio Jones, Antonio Brown, and A.J. Green all had 108 or more yards against the Packers. And, and Evans is in that class of receivers. So at 7,500, he's, he's a lot. I mean, in cash, he's a no-brainer. And I think Cole Beasley might have had a pair of touchdowns against them as well, if, if, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. So, um, you know, Cole Beasley may not be in that class of receivers. I think we can all uh, – Just a here. little bit. Yeah. <laughs> He's um, shifty. <clears throat> so, uh, a couple things I'm, I'm monitoring, not so much for cash games, but I, I like Adam Thielen this week against, um, against Brian Poole there coming out of the slot in Atlanta. Uh, Brian Poole's one of the, the, just from a personnel perspective, one of the worst slot uh, uh, cornerbacks in the league. And um, Thielen, in terms of yards after the catch, is uh, I believe he's fourth in the league uh, in terms of wide receivers this, this, this year. And Poole, I think, is second worst in yards after the catch. So it's really a, a perfect storm of, of situations for Thielen. And I'm rooting for um, Trufant, Desmond Trufant, to be starting for that reason, although that's looking less and less likely um, by the day. Um, and then keep an eye on what's going on in Tennessee. I was kind of disappointed to see that Rashard Matthews is not coming out of this hamstring issue uh, very quickly because um, the slot – the slot quarterback there in Houston, uh, uh, Kareem Jackson, is one of the worst in the NFL. Uh, maybe, not maybe, definitely worse than Brian Poole, who I just talked about. He's allowed more yards um, than any uh, cornerback in the NFL all season. He's allowed more receiving yards than any cornerback over the past five weeks. So he's been consistently bad throughout the year. I thought Rashard Matthews was uh, coming off of a of a uh, an injury week last week would be the guy I'd be looking at, but it's looking more and more like he won't play. So, uh, is it Eric Decker? Is that who it is, guys? I, I don't know. Is it Eric Decker? Is it somebody who who's going to run out of the slot position oh. if uh, Rashard Matthews doesn't play? Nobody, I'd probably Decker. Yeah, it'd be Decker. I want Taylor, like Taylor, maybe. Yeah, if, if it's Taylor. Taylor, I actually kind of like Taylor more from a GPP perspective. The problem is, one catch for eight yards last week, and like, yeah, Decker's more of the slot guy. I think Taylor would be outside. Whoever it is, just monitor that situation carefully because that person's going to be open. Uh, Kareem Jackson's been targeted about one every five uh, coverage snaps this season, and uh, Mariota is a very sneaky. He's not a guy I mentioned earlier in the in the episode, but he's a very sneaky GPP play this week, due for a lot of touchdown regression. 
Um, he's he's way, not good. Historical numbers. Uh, <laughs> he's still due for touchdown regret. He burned me last Devin, week. we were doing so well, brother, and then you had to uh, then you had to disagree with me. How far did we make it, Austin? Like twenty eight minutes or so? We're at like thirty five. Yeah, that was impressive. Uh, yeah, we were doing. <laughs> I'll say. Well. I'll say that Kareem Jackson uh, target ratio may end up going down, though, because if Richard Matthews doesn't play, Delaney Walker's getting the targets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Walk- Walker's going to be a strong play for sure. Uh, we're just about out of time for receivers. Let me just one mention. More. Okay, one more. give me one more, and then I'll run Real through Real quick, a few. Uh, so we mentioned Keenan Allen briefly, but the Browns really struggle against slot guys who move around against around the field. So Brian, ba- Brian Body Calhoun has actually been pretty good. The problem is that – in the slot, you're not always – he doesn't shadow to both sides. So, uh, sometimes they'll have Jabril Peppers or Derek Kindren guarding the slot. Adam Thielen had 97 yards. Golden Tate had 98 yards. T.Y. Hilton had 153. And Antonio Brown had 182. So, Keenan Allen out of the slot is in a tremendous matchup this week. Yeah. Uh, there's a few other guys I want to mention. Uh, Demarius Thomas and Emmanuel Sanders feel really cheap on DraftKings. Uh, I like Thomas there with Simeon coming back. Uh, I wouldn't play them in cash, but I like that as a GPP play. Um, and then we didn't really mention Brandon Cooks. His price is especially low over on FanDuel, and it does not look like we're going to be getting back uh, Chris Hogan this week. Um, so I think he's viable for either cash or GPPs, although there's probably a couple of better cash game options there. Uh, Devin hates Brandon Cooks. No, it's just Gronk week. It's, it's Gronk, Gronk week. House It's week. Gronk Smash Week. And Gronk, you know. Gronk is, going home to Buffalo, and I'll get yeah. into it in tight ends, but it's Gronkowski okay. all day. Buffalo well, that's, a, that's, a great, that's a great transition. Let's start talking <laughs> about tight ends. Uh, really, there's only two guys here to talk about. Uh, Greg Olson, who we mentioned earlier, he didn't practice Thursday, but coach says he could play without practicing, so we'll keep an eye on that. And then uh, Kobe Fleener has been ruled out. So maybe that opens up a weird, sneaky play for Josh Hill or Michael Humanawanui. Humanawanui. I just wanted to who say that. Al, who Al Manui? It's Humanawanui. <laughs> I think with the lag in, uh, in Devin's uh, internet access, it actually came out the way it was supposed to be. Who Al Manui? Can we just talk about Gronk now? Yeah, let's talk about <laughs> yes. Gronk smashing. Uh, please, Devin, tell us about Gronk smashing. <laughs> He's played six games in Buffalo. He's from Buffalo. Five for 109 and a touchdown. Seven for 113 and a touchdown. Seven for 94. Five for 104 and a touchdown. Seven for 109 and a touch. Two touchdowns and four for 54 and two touchdowns. That's all you need to say. <laughs> Gronk smash. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah. Duh, I, John. I don't know what else. Is, I don't know what else to say. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I like him more than Kelsey uh, this week at a similar price on DraftKings. Uh, over there on FanDuel, you got to pay a little bit more of a premium. Kelsey feels a little cheap. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. You're going to pay that extra 1100 to get up to 100 yards in a touchdown and five catches, you're at 20 points. Is We've seen Kelsey with his floor at like five points on FanDuel. Like Gronkowski is one of the most emotional players in the league. We see it. We see it all the time. Going home, with we, we know he has a big – crowd around him and he just gets pumped up it's i'm not a big narrative guy but i'm in on this one yeah yeah uh jared cook will also see high ownership especially over on fan duel uh with those raiders receivers out and the giants struggling against the tight end uh john do you have any others other than gronk and cook on your list yeah i mean i think uh i think it was ryan who mentioned it earlier uh delaney walker's definitely in play 5600 6400 on fan duel um, you know, he's, he's, he's probably the number one receiver when Rashard Matthews is not on the field. Uh, even with Corey Davis, uh, the uprising of Corey Davis, so to speak, he's a guy that I think is, is certainly in playing cash games. And, um, you know, I, I mentioned Cameron Brait. I think Cameron Brait's actually uh, definitely in play for, for DraftKings. 2,900, too cheap. Uh, I look for him to, to have a resurgence this week with the return of Jameis Winston. Um, OJ Howard's probably going to be, uh, I know Devin's going to throw up his red black eyed Joe at this. Thank you, brother. Um, OJ Howard's going to be a guy who's, uh, going to be blocking a lot this week. And I think Cameron Brait benefits from that blocking and he's 2,900. I love those, those cheap tr- tight ends over there at DraftKings. So Cameron Brait's a guy, and then I'll throw one more out. I, I was surprised, uh, just uh, a little bit earlier, I was going through some, uh, some pre-gaming for the show, 
Detroit's really bad against the tight end position this season. I think your normalized strength of schedule tool shows that, Austin. Um, ben Watson is kind of sneaky at 3,100 on DraftKings. Um, and he's almost a min price over there at FanDuel. So if you're looking for a low-owned guy who, who has, has his AARP a- 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 card, by the way. Well, I mean, I have mine as well. And, I, I, you know, so that would be uh, – <laughs> but you're not in the NFL. So. I'd, I'd rather I'd rather Ben Watson than Cameron Brait. I mean, isn't Ricky Stills Jones at 3,200 the guy? I'd rather uh, him than Cameron Brait also, especially in GPPs. I and mean, we were talking upside. That Ricky Seal Jones is upside man. Are we really buying into Ricky yes. Seal Jones? Yes. Yes. He's a oh, five-star he recruit coming out of high school. John, he was playing out of position. He was a deep threat at Texas A&M. Yes. Okay. His his snap count isn't going to stay where it is. You guys are crazy I know. with this. The, crazy. Not in he, GPPs. He's the Will Fuller of tight ends. You the, guys are crazy with this. The argument against him is his snap count is low. It's not going to stay that low. The, guy's get, the guy is getting going to get on the field. He has earned it. Okay. It, it's yeah. a ton, ton Remember, of talent. I'm going to have, a, I'm gonna have a, a hashtag crazy in, in, in place of the, uh, the, the, the black guy Joe behind me next week. So well, you, you would play Bray over Seals Jones in GPPs. Without thinking twice. In fact, I might have zero percent of Seals Jones this weekend. We wow. We will talk well, about him against in, the Seals. That's not very nice. We will talk about <laughs> him in future weeks because in weeks fifteen and sixteen he plays Washington and the Giants in some order. We're going to be talking about this guy in future weeks. He's, he's he'll be fifty five hundred on DraftKings at that point. <laughs> Once they tweak it based on matchup, it could be. Jeff, uh, any other tight ends left from this uh, rubble of tight end discussion? Well, on FanDuel, both tight ends in the Sunday night game are in play with Ertz and Graham. I think those are both in play for – I'd probably throw them into GPPs versus uh, to cash. But the one name that hasn't been mentioned I wanted to hear about was uh, Hunter Henry. I think yeah. he's in a great spot against yeah. Cleveland. Uh, we like Rivers. I think he's a good play. He's going to get overlooked this week. And I think he's uh, especially attractive on FanDuel at 5,400. 4,700 on DraftKings where the pricing's a little tighter is yeah. tougher to play him, but uh, I think he's in play on both sites, just better on FanDuel. Let's talk defenses and kickers. This is the spot where John takes a nap and uh, Jeff talks about stuff. And uh, Ryan or Devin, do you have a defense or a kicker you want to mention real quick? Yeah, the Chargers. Chargers are, are good this week. Yeah, I mean, Bosa, Bosa and Ingram going against these left tackle, left tackles and Sean Coleman and Spencer Drongo. It's a, it's a huge. It's the biggest mismatch of the week. It's they should have, they should have a huge day. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Ryan, did you have any over I'll, there? I'll get GPP Green Bay out of the way because of the aforementioned offensive line losses in Tampa. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yep. Yep. Jeff, uh, who do you like at defense and kicker this week? The the chalker, the Chargers, and the Jaguars. Those are the two guys. The Rams fit, but uh, as we've seen before, it's worth spending a couple extra hundred bucks to get the defenses that are worth it. The Chargers and the Jaguars are both worth it this week. Probably the Chargers will be number one, uh, but that's for good reason. Be different to your lineups elsewhere. Kickers is a little shaky this week. I looked at the – there were six guys that are playing for home favorites that are – teams are scoring 24 or more points – you got guys from 4,600 with Lambo all the way up to lots for 5K. The only guy who has had at least eight games with 10 or more points is Lutz. So pay the 5K for Lutz. The other guy is Bryant, who's 4,900. He's a viable option, but he's hurt again. His back is not feeling well, which means he could kick. But we've seen kickers have injuries against Dallas the last two weeks. You don't want to have a kicker injury. You don't want – and odds are he won't kick a long field goal because of the back injury. So He's 44. With, Your back's going to hurt when you're that old. <laughs> sure, sure. But I, I don't think he's kicking past his age in yards. So I think we're going Lutz for the kicker this week. <laughs> nice. Uh, let's talk about stacks, fellas. I like, I like how every old player that gets thrown out immediately dismissed, except for Matt Bryant. <laughs> except for Matt Bryant. <laughs> Um, Love right. it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, Devin's uh, man crush. He's my, uh, he's my kicker. He's my teammate. Yep, exactly. <laughs> John, uh, give us a stack or two you're looking at uh, this week. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, if Rashard Matthews is somehow active, I, I love him with uh, Marcus Mariota this week uh, for the reasons I described earlier, but I, I have a feeling at this stage in the game he's not going to be. So, uh, 
I'm going to go against the grain this week. I mean, that's what stacks are all about. I'm going to go with Drew Brees and Michael Thomas. Uh, here, here I'll, I'll do it for you. <laughs> <laughs> again, again. Uh, doesn't get red zone targets, and he's not a deep threat. But that's all I'm going to say. Um, he's going up against James Bradbury. He'll get shadow coverage from Bradbury in Carolina. Um, uh, over, over the past five weeks, only one uh, defensive back has given up more uh, yardage in coverage than James Bradbury, and um, he's uh, seventh worst overall on the season. Um, I, you know, I'm just going to keep going back to this until it happens, and I, and I think that the ownership levels uh, are, going to, are going to be uh, good enough for me, especially when we take into account that the, uh, the New Orleans Saints have the third highest implied team total on the main slate this weekend. We're going to see John in a cardboard box in week 17 because he keeps going to Michael Thomas. <laughs> we, we could. <laughs> Devin, who do you like as your stacks this week? Yeah, so for me, I, I, I think I'm going to go a little. Okay, that's fine. I already know you're anti Jameis Winston, so I'm going Jameis Winston and Mike Evans. Uh, I think that Winston has an upside, especially on, fan, or on DraftKings where he's too cheap. Um, on FanDuel, I'm going – I'm going Phillip Rivers and Keenan Allen for the reasons that I mentioned. I think that Keenan Allen has 23 catches over his last two games. He scored, he's, he's on one of those tears that we've seen when he's healthy. Hopefully he doesn't get hurt because it seems like every time he's going with big volume, he gets hurt. But um, this, slot, this slot coverage from the Browns um, has been atrocious, as I mentioned. So I'm not going to repeat it. But um, DraftKings, it's Winston and Evans. FanDuel, it's Rivers and Allen. Chalk. I'm a cash game player. Sorry. <laughs> and we, we sometimes refer to stacking and cash games as All like. All right, fine. Geno Smith and Sterling Shepard. That's better. <laughs> <laughs> we sometimes refer to safe stacks in cash games as cash plus um, around football guys. It's, it's one of the, you know, methods we like to use in cash games to add just a little bit more upside to an otherwise sort of. Uh, the the chalk this week's Brady and Gronk, by the way. Yeah, yep. That I mean, that, that is the chalkiest like, stack. Not according to uh, Buzzard's projections. Well, he's before. wrong. <laughs> I'm going to tell him that after the show. All right, <laughs> Jeff. Who give me, give us a stack or two you've got going? At quarterback, wide receiver, I like Cam and Funches. Funches had a good game the first time these two met up. Mm-hmm. I think that he's going to get Funches is going to get overlooked. Um, I think the Jets stack is we mentioned Josh earlier. I think Josh McCown to a Robbie Anderson who keeps scoring touchdowns. Um, and uh, the one other one that we kind of talked about, we talked about the, um, I think Melvin Gordon's in play. I think Melvin Gordon uh, pairing his with his defense is, 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 is a solid play this week. Yep. Uh, and especially as a GPP play there, Ryan. Uh, yeah. Oh, go ahead. Josh Gordon. Just, just one more. <laughs> and again, sticking with the theme of stay, go with, go with the high scoring teams, but go a little bit off the beaten path. I think Jared Goff and Reynolds at wide receiver. I think he's got a great matchup. He's very cheap on, on DraftKings at 3,500. He saw 61 snaps, a couple catches, and a touchdown. He'll get there. Yep, I like that one. Uh, Ryan, give me some stacks. Yeah, real quick because we, we went long, but a couple cheap guys in wide receivers. Um, building Jeff reminded me with the Jets stuff. Is Jermaine Curse is 4,300 at DraftKings, 5,800 at uh, – FanDuel and Seth Roberts, I think, is is your Oakland guy. If there's an answer, remember once upon a time, it might have been last year that he was the red zone guy, not Amari Cooper. He's 3,700 DraftKings, 4,900 FanDuel. Moving on, uh, we'll go real deep here with the stack because John called out Devin and because I wanted to say this stat. Um, Trevor Simeon, Emmanuel Sanders, and Kenyon Drake, if you wanted to run it back in that horrible, horrible Denver-Miami game featuring some horrible, horrible defenses, or at least one. But uh, Sanders averages four more PPR points per game with Simeon, and Demarius Thomas averages three fewer PPR points with Simeon. So if you're going for the the what-the-hell GPP, uh, go with Sanders. Um, And then also this week, I I see we don't usually want to put running backs in the same game together in in our lineups, but I see a couple that are actually pretty good. High profile, you've got McCaffrey and either of the Saints backs could put up work. Uh, Carlos Hyde and Jordan Howard. Carlos Hyde has seen double digit targets in like three of the last four games or something. So even if Jordan Howard runs amok and the Niners are behind, Hyde will get some points. And then even Devontae Booker and Kenyon Drake is, is crazy cheap. 
and those guys are going to see touches, and they're both in the 4K range in DraftKings. So some yes. weird uh, correlations, but it, it's possible to do running back, running back this week at any price point. Carlos Hyde has, is averaging nine targets per game over the past five games. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how the quarterback switch impacts that a little bit this week, but he has been heavily involved in the passing game. And then uh, you mentioned the Denver-Miami game. The Denver defense has sort of weakened, and they're going to be without a keep to leave this week due to suspension. So that's one less piece that will be helping that defense that was already kind of uh, up and down a bit this season. It's still Jay Cutler, though. Yeah, where's it, the color stack? It is, <laughs> yeah. I, I just, I just Denver, picked one, Denver's one guy in from that team. Yeah. yeah. Jay Denver Cutler and Devontae Parker. No. Um, that would be the stack if I was doing it, but I'm not. Um, let's go to parting thoughts here. Uh, Jeff, uh, instill us with your words of wisdom on a wacky week 13. Lucky week 13 here. Yeah. Uh, Sometimes it's very hard to pare down your list of players, and sometimes it's hard to come up with a list of players. I think the the, the way this week, uh, I'd start by paring it down um, by games you don't want to touch. And I just, like, stick to the games you think you're going to have plenty of points, plenty of production. Maybe go off the beaten path for one or guy that you th- might think is a value and look for an injury guy. Again, have a, have a, have a lineup that's prepared for a – a wide receiver that's hurt or a, a, a cheap wide receiver or a cheap running back into a free contest on FanDuel or DraftKings, wherever you play and just have a placeholder there just so ready. So you have a lineup already built on Saturday in case that happens, you know, where you're going to go to and you can pivot your lineups and hope for the best there. Yeah. Ryan, uh, words of wisdom. I've kind of talked a lot here, so I'll just give a shout out to John and, and say, uh, beware the road favorites. And if you're, if you're looking to get rid of games, like Jeff said, just, just beware of the road favorites and, and, and try to script it out. Yeah, that Tampa Bay game. Tampa Bay, I think, opened as the, as the favorite once Winston was announced he was playing, and it shifted over to Green Bay. I was going to say that was one I was worried about as a road favorite early in the week, but Vegas shifted their line on that one. Uh, Devin, uh, give me your words of wisdom. Start the player who's playing his first game since middle school sober in Josh Gordon. <laughs> <laughs> I mean – I imagine yourself back in college when you had a couple too many cocktails. That's Josh Gordon in every single NFL game he's ever played. It it worries me a little bit like that old Clint Don't, Eastwood no, movie, no, 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 the no, Clint no, Eastwood no, no. Unforgiven thing, right? No, Where he like no, can't no, shoot no, anymore no. when he doesn't drink. Exactly. <laughs> oh, you know, no, 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 no. it's not like he's that. He's got no, no hundred yard I mean, games when he's been Josh, sober. Josh Gordon was smoking things and taking pills and drinking. Like, come on, like no. No, I no, wish no, him no, the no. best. Like, I hope that this yeah. works out really well, like in a Chris Carter kind of way. Like, this would be awesome. But, like, um, you know, I, I want to see it a couple I mean, of games. driving is illegal when you've had too many drinks. There's a reason for that. Josh Gordon's not – unless he's, like, superhuman, which I might think he is. Um, but alcohol impairs you, and it shouldn't – I mean, Gordon, Gordon should be in a <laughs> – he should be better than what he ever was. He if he's be. the same – if he's the same athletic specimen, and that, that's debatable, and we can get into that because he hasn't played in three years, but playing sober for the first time since middle school, athletically, you don't run faster when, you're, when you have alcohol or weed or whatever in your system. It's just not John, – John's a scientist. He can ramble off hemoglobin <laughs> or whatever he wants to ramble. <laughs> but it's it, – it's just not true. Give it a week or two, though, Devin, and then I'll agree with you. <laughs> I, I'm excited to see what he can do. I'm excited to see what he can do. John, awesome. wrap, wrap this thing up. <laughs> Bring I us home. I can, actually. <laughs> uh, talk about hemoglobins or something. Transition, uh, please. I, yeah. actually, I, I don't think anybody's rooting for him more than me. I, I really, truly am, am hoping that this guy is uh, what we all thought he was and that he uh, somehow gets it under wraps. So I – um, I actually kind of hope I'm wrong uh, this weekend. Um, I'm not going to have much of him for all the reasons I talked about earlier. That said, if he disappoints me, I will not be that disappointed in the sense that, you know, good for him. Uh, with regards to, uh, you know, the things that I want to wrap up, you know, this is a really strange week. I started it off. I'll, I'll p- kind of finish it off by saying that um, this, this is a strange week in the sense that uh, cash games, I'm, uh, I'm a little concerned about cash games this week. Um, for all the reasons that we've outlined over the past hour, uh, if I'm – not if I am uh, you, I am me, and therefore I'm running out multiple cash lineups this week, which is something I typically don't do. 
but I'm doing that to, uh, to minimize risk on a week where I think there's plenty of risk. Uh, I'm also uh, minimizing my cash games overall and probably going a little bit higher on GPPs. And uh, part of that is I think that there are some uh, really good ex uh, 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 ownership opportunities. And um, I'll give a plug for Steve Buzzard. I, it, you know, we always talk about Buzzard. Everybody, this is the mysterious Buzzard guy, right? But um, he's one of the smartest guys on our staff, and he uh, he projects ownership on our on our site every week. He uh, he puts one out early, and then another one out updated on Saturday. Uh, and those ownership per percentages, excuse me, are uh, are are invaluable with making out GPP lineups. So definitely can consider those. And then the last thing, I'm going to hand it off to you, Austin. We have uh, multiple articles that are free over the next several weeks and um, several of which are written by panelists this week. And I'll give to Austin to talk about what those are and uh, certainly wrap it up uh, however you wish. <laughs> yeah, we've got uh, three uh, key articles that are free over at footballguys.com slash DFS. Uh, one of them is our interactive value chart, kind of our lineup builder for DraftKings is free this week. That's uh, created by uh, Moral Tremblay. And then uh, Ryan's got his trend spotting article uh, this week is free. And then John on Saturday releases his tips and picks article, which gives you both cash game and GPP plays on Saturday morning. So it's kind of like his uh, sort of last thoughts uh, late in the week if you want to see where he's headed with his lineups. And, uh, I mean, it's legit. Like, the players he puts in his article are the players that he plays. So uh, go, go check that out. It's one of our best articles on the site. So that's all we got for tonight's show. Thank you guys for joining us. On behalf of John Lee, Devin Knotts, Ryan Hester, and Jeff Pasquino, I am Austin Lee. Thank you for watching, and thanks for being a football guy. To check out all of our DFS content over at footballguys.com, click on the icon in front of Ryan's face. To subscribe to our Football Guys TV YouTube channel, be sure to click on the button on John's face. And if you'd like to see our latest video, click below me now.